I reckon there's a good chance this will be the hardest track I've ever driven. Welcome to Tallarook. This is the steepest angle I've been in this car, I reckon. I don't know if you guys can tell by the grin that's probably on my face the whole time, but I actually love driving this car. Hey! Join us as we take the rebuild patrol on its first ever tracks. Oh man! What a spot! And experience some of the best camping and cooking we've done to date. Oh my god! Paddy's gonna have fun fixing this so we can go home. All right, we're finally out of the shed. We've got our Forbies, we're at Tallarook State Forest. It's Liam's first time taking the patrol off-road, so yeah. we're super excited. It's gonna be a hell of a weekend. We've got some camping to do, go do some tough tracks, and um, yeah, just hopefully get the patrol sort of worked in. Yeah, we just I just wanna see how it goes, especially compared to Patrick's 80 series. Now he's front locked, um, but I do have obviously bigger tires and more tread, so I think it'll be pretty good actually. <laughs> You know, sort of battle. There's been a bit too. of banter of whose car is going to drive what track, so we'll we'll go out, figure it out, and um, yeah, it should be a good good couple of days. So let's, let's do get it. into it. All right, so we've just come across our first little obstacle. Um, now we're going to air down quickly, and obviously now I've got bead locks, uh, which means I can go to very low pressures. So normally when I was back on the steelies, I'd probably go down to like maybe 20 psi, 18 psi. But with the bead locks, like. I'm probably gonna start with like, I don't know, 12 or 14, cause why not, I can. I did hear somewhere that the party starts at eight PSI, but I don't think I'm ready to party just yet. So we'll go down to about that and then we'll, uh, we'll see how they go. I still don't have a tire deflator. I use a knife and a pressure gauge. All right, so first track in the patrol, 14 PSI in the tires, bead locks, suspension, Let's see how we go. Like if that was the leafy, that would have been Struggle Street, I reckon. But Jesus, that just absolutely crawled up there. At least you did that like it wasn't even a thing. That's a, that's crazy. I'll be interested to see how your car yeah, goes now. Watch you make it look hard now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if I can make it look as graceful as Liam. Well, Paddy's car did that pretty easy, I thought. Who did it more elegantly? I don't know, well, I'll have to review the footage. <laughs> Let us but... know in the comments. Also, while we're out wheeling today, I've got new tracks up on my new head unit that I put in the Atoto, and it's working absolutely awesome. It's got the maps all there, can zoom in and out, set markers, do whatever I want. Yeah, it's working great. Alright, here's our next track. I'm feeling pretty confident after that last little section, so we're going to pick sort of, I think it looks like the tougher line is the left side. Um, we're just going to crawl up and see what happens. There is a bit of a gnarly few rocks in the middle that look pretty jagged, which sort of scare me, but... On all these kinds of rocky tracks, I'm really just trying to crawl as slow as possible to minimise wheel spin and keep the most traction. I don't know if you guys can tell by the grin that's probably on my face the whole time, but I absolutely love driving this car. I absolutely love it. All right, Liam went the left-hand line. Made it look pretty easy, so I might change, choose the right-hand line for something different. Nice and slow, plenty of grip. I'll tell you what, these tires, they are unbelievable. <laughs> it feels so good to have a good set of muddies. It just makes life so easy. And being able to drop from such low pressure. Tell you what, having the locker just gives you that much more control when you're doing these tracks. You can just crawl them and it just takes you up. 
Liam and I were stoked on how easily our cars were getting up these tracks, but it was only going to get harder from here on out. There's a tree across the track which means you had to go around it and like circle around and then turn back into the rut, which is uh, a bit hard, so we'll see how we go. sort of hard you know never having good performing suspension before up until now um, but from what I can tell the suspension the F4R formula shock seems to be doing really well I've just got them set on like pretty much the softer setting I figured you know softer will allow for more you know sort of suspension movement so I just got them set on like one but I'll, I'll, I'll play I'll have to have a proper play around with it but seem to be working good so far so and even with the 80 series as heavy as it is I was still really impressed on how it was performing on the tracks Unfortunately, uh, part of full driving is sometimes I have to drive through water and mud. Even though these holes aren't big, they're still enough to get things dirty. <laughs> Which I was going to try and refrain from doing, but I guess the patrol's not going to be able to stay clean forever, so... It smells, it gets everywhere, mud's just not... It's, it's all part it's, of it, though. Yeah, come across well, we, we can't, yeah, we can't get around. We're just jumping onto rocky track. See how the crawling capabilities go. Okay, this is pretty. getting over this rock so I'm going to back it up and pick a different line. standard Aussie Airways lunch hot dogs. Yeah, they're easy, they're good. That's the thing, I love like these. It's a setup like this, but then you can go drive tracks like that. And it's like, yeah, well, you know that's, what I mean? Yeah, that's like, it's, that's why it's like the best of both worlds. Like, it's hard tracks and like just being able to live out of it. But once you get your canopy on, I mean, you can get yeah, it by right. Yeah. So after a quick lunch at the top of Mount Hickey, we began heading back down the mountain, hoping to find a campsite for the night. some timber across one of the tracks so we decided to cut up the firewood and take it with us to camp. And how handy is it having a ute? That's not going anywhere. So we got back on the tracks looking for a simple bush camp but did we stumble across something special? Look at how we actually might be on here buddy. Oh it's a stick. This is 
Jesus, that's mint. Oh, I hate it. Oh, this is bad. Not bad. What a spot. Tucked away on the edge of a pine plantation, we found the most unexpected campsite views ever. You can see bloody for ages out there. And neither Liam or I expected to find anything like this out here. So what do you think about the view, Liam? Yeah, bloody fantastic. <laughs> Although, me and Patrick, we're sort of pretty spoiled for choice when it comes to camping sometimes, but we, I pretty much adopt the rule that Generally speaking, if you have freedom of choice and time, a campsite needs either a good view or like a water source, like a, a river or on a lake or something. Um, I mean, you can still get nice camps just in the bush and that, but yeah, can't compete with that. So. It's ruining our pristine campsite. It's making it look like shit. Yeah, exactly. Who the f brings a... F Oh, is that a ceramic plate? Ceramic plate. Put it all in. I'll just it when we get out. Let's drop it in. More weight to the back of the 80. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't have the bin bag. That's nah, right. So he looks a million times better with that gone. Yeah. Like, it's not hard to bring that much rubbish home with you. Like, Jesus. I'm wearing my orange jumpsuit. <laughs> yeah. <Crash. laughs> Doing community service. Yeah, I know. <laughs> all right, so we're set up at camp. Got a bloody awesome view. So actually, we're super stoked to get this spot. It was much better than we actually expected. Um, and we've got the fire going. I'm gonna start doing some cooking. So I haven't done camp cooking in a while. It's been a while since I've been camping, um, but I'm keen to do it. We're gonna do something different with the help of uh, Harry from Fighter Fork's cookbook. He gave us this last time we went away with him. Um, and so we're gonna put it to good use because me and Patty could certainly use some help when it comes to cooking. Um, yeah, and we're gonna do some camp oven ribs. So the first thing, I've, I've, I've done my research. <laughs> and the first thing we've got to do is remove, there's like a layer of sort of sinew at the back of the ribs. So if you don't remove that beforehand, um, once you cook it, it'll come really tough. Um, and it'll like hold it together, it'll prevent the meat from falling off the bone. So we're going to veer just slightly off of Harry's recipe. We're going to be applying a, like a barbecue rub first. Again, YouTube's helped me out. Apparently you need a binder. So we're going to use mustard because it tastes good and um, we'll give it flavour. And then I've heard you keep one hand dry and one hand wet. This is just to help the rub stick to it. And next we're going to be putting on our rub. Now we're using a barbecue rub called Status Swine and this is actually from the guys at Mountain Culture Beer Co who kindly sent us out uh, some of their beers to try. So and they actually taste, they're actually going down a treat and they're nice and cold which helps too. Um, so yeah, we're going to be using some of this to put on our ribs. Okay, these are going to be freaking awesome I reckon. <laughs> I reckon so too. They look awesome. All right, so we just had the rub sitting on him for about 15 minutes or so now. Part of the recipe, before you put him in the slow cooker, you want to get some of that smoky, like, char-type flavour. And to do that, we're just going to chuck him on the grill over the, like, sort of, like, a hot flames and smoke for, like, you know, not even 10 minutes. And while they're doing that, we're going to start prepping the camp oven for him to go straight into. One of the first ingredients, a can of beer. This isn't wasting a beer, by the way. This is for the cook, so... All right, and then because this is 350 mil, gonna fill it straight back up with water. Three tablespoons of brown sugar. A little bit more water. Mustard, barbecue sauce. Salt it up, pepper it up. Oh yeah, see that? See the char, making flavor. That's what we want. And then, we're gonna take this over to the fire. We're gonna stick our ribs, now that they're nice and charred. We're gonna stand them up like that. All right, shovel. It doesn't have to be high heat, just low heat. Oh, all right, now we're essentially gonna let them, those ribs cook for as long as they need. It could be a couple hours. You pretty much want it until the meat's like starting to fall off the bone, essentially. So yeah, we're gonna just sort of let that sit and uh, do a thing. So, Liam and I were just talking and I thought I'd better turn the camera on because we are discussing like how good it's been to get the cars out on the tracks. Mm. Like the amount of time we've spent in the shed the past 12 months and to finally have it like on the road and moving. Like you were saying how much fun you've had today in the patrol. Yeah, oh, it's so good to just actually do with it what it's made for, you know? You can't, you, you get stuck at the shed spinning spanners every day and like it just goes on you're like, well yeah, one day, one day, one day. And then like to have it actually sitting <coughs> there as a cool cab patrol, like from when it was the least wrong thing. Yeah. Like to how it is today and like to see, yeah, your face today on those tracks, like, Oh, I was grinning from ear to ear the whole time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because the, the thought of 
it's funny when you're just working on it just just the thought of doing something like this is enough to keep you, to give you motivation mm. to do it mm. but then you actually come out and do it and you're like oh it was so fun yeah it's just yeah I, I don't know when i had the leafy like i wouldn't have, like having a car like that was just like a pipe dream like you're always looking at other people with a car that'd be sick to have a car but it's like now i own that car yeah and I, I i can drive it so no it's sick as the sun went down over our awesome campsite, we prepped the last few bits for dinner, ready for an awesome feed. Yeah, see how they're falling off the bone? Yep. Wow. Oh my Never God, God. we're bloody... <laughs> Fit for a king. Yeah, I'll tell you what, that's, I'm actually pretty... Pretty, pretty impressed by those things that <laughs> If I were handed that at a pub, I'd be very impressed. Yeah, li exactly like, right. That's the, that's the test. This is actually incredible. All right, I'm about to try some of the meat. All right, ready? Here we go. Bro. Good. <laughs> oh my mm. God. That's actually incredible. I'm not even, I'm, I'm not not even lying. I'm not even <laughs> saying that. That is genuinely... We woke up to an awesome sunrise and quickly cooked up some brekkie so we were ready to hit the tracks. Now, a few of you are probably wondering what the go is with like the camping setup for the patrol. Obviously at the moment, just the good old swag on the back and uh, Pelican box, which is pretty easy. But obviously the canopy will be coming. It is something I want to do. I just was actually keen to sort of just take it out camping and full wheel driving just bare bones, just in its factory form. Sometimes that sort of camping is what I really enjoy as well. Just basic, you know, um, especially when Paddy can carry all the frozen stuff, which is handy. Um, but canopy will be coming. Heaps of, so much stuff to do for that. I'm really keen to do it, so stay tuned for that. Well, that was actually a pretty awesome campsite, I thought. Um, what do you reckon, Paddy? Yeah, for State Forest, I mean, that's probably one of the best views I've, I've seen in a State Forest. Very, very good spot. Yeah, and we actually had prime conditions as well. Like, there was hardly any wind, no rain, so it was actually perfect. Yeah, it was bloody awesome. But uh, I guess now we're back on the tracks because we're heading to tackle one of those four-wheel tracks we saw yesterday, but we weren't really brave enough to do it then, but we're gonna give it a crack today and see how we go. Yeah, it looked pretty, uh, potentially pretty difficult, so I'm keen to give it a crack. But before we could even get to the track, I was already running into issues on my smaller tires. I'm stuck. We were just doing the entrance track and we've got this sort of like rutted out section and Paddy's like diffed out like a beach turtle. Pretty much. Yeah. So we just gotta run the winch out quickly and um, get him through and he'll be right. The 80 was unstuck and I was loving just how well my low air pressures were letting my tires stick to the track. But the challenge ahead would be the true test of the patrol's capability. All right, so we made it to the track. This is flat rock track. Um, so we're just sort of at the base of like the hard section, I guess you could call it. So there's a couple of different lines you can take down the bottom. Um, I'm probably gonna try to drive the harder one. And then there's like a bunch of like sort of rock steps. They're not super steep, but I should just be able to crawl up them, I'm thinking. And then there's a bit of like a tight turn, which you gotta navigate a few rocks to get up and over, but we can winch if we have to as well. There is a tree up there that we should be able to winch to with some extension straps. So yeah, I reckon the plan is just to go slow and Paddy's gonna <laughs> nav me through it. <laughs> but I'm keen. I don't yeah. know, after yesterday, I feel like I can drive anything. Maybe that's bad. Maybe that's gonna lead me into trouble, but yeah, I reckon let's just send it. <laughs> oh, no chance. I reckon there's a good chance this will be the hardest track I've ever driven. It's like so far, not, not saying that it's a, it's going to be crazy hard, but yeah, <laughs> it's good. You can just straddle all these ruts. Like, you know, I don't see the point in driving in ruts if you don't have to. You're just going to scrape your diff. If you can avoid it, I say go for it. Did it easy. First challenge done. <laughs> uh, this is where it's going to get interesting. You just might have to help me navigate around this big rock. Hopefully we can fit around that without scuffing the rims too much. <laughs> We managed to move the boulder across just enough so that I could squeeze past without damaging the patrol. 
Slow and steady should come around. Yeah, 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 you throw, you throw. It's perfect, perfect, perfect. <laughs> Might be a winch job. Yeah, see your front right's just doing nothing. If I had a front lock, I'd probably drive it. I almost need to throw something in that hole. Oh, the first bit of use on the patrol. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> that, that was mint. Maybe that rock did help. Wow, that was sick. That was absolutely awesome. So, what I've been doing as well, is I use my hand throttle just to set the revs higher. So it means that when I take off, I'm less likely to stall it. Make this couple of little tiny little rock steps here, should be no dramas. Get up them. Now this is actually be a hard bit of track. <laughs> too easy, mate. This thing's <laughs> that was too easy. That's crazy. Like, there would have been no way in hell I would have thought of doing that in the least front patrol, but this thing, unlocked. Just goes to show, Jeep, like, patrols in stock form, put a set of good tight, good set of tires on them, 35s helps. Just unstoppable. <laughs> oh, that is so good. Oh well, you definitely got some, uh, <laughs> I've set the bar. Yeah, you have, you definitely have. All right. This is definitely going to be the most technical bit of wheeling I've ever done. Let's see if we can do it. But as I took off, I noticed a hissing sound from my front right tyre. I think um, I might have someone... So yeah, as we saw there, I got the dirt and mud in the bead. That's why Liam has bead locks, <laughs> for that very reason. Well, hopefully my front right deflating tire will give me the grip I need to get up this bit. We're getting to the pointy end. But I'm just like very conscious of panel damage. I, I don't want to do panel damage. So I just take it very gentle. How you feel? Yeah, all right, I should take it gentle and... Yeah, I'll crawl, crawl first, see what happens. Yeah, she's heavy. <laughs> It'll definitely need a bit of a pop up. This is the steepest yeah. angle I've been in on this car, I reckon. <laughs> um, I can't, am I, I think I'm, I'm, I'm being held back by something. Oh, yeah, your rear bar's in the dirt. So I have to winch. It is, I mean, you can try crawl forward a bit if you want. Try a little bit more. I'm like caught in the rear there, I reckon. Yeah, that's it's your rear bar. bar. I can see where it's dipped down. It's just, yeah, the weight of the car is on pretty much. Nah, so winch out, I suppose. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Look at that. Right and buried. Yeah, your rear bar is like proper buried in there. <laughs> oh, these going are handy though. Just pull up the slack, and then I'm going to jump out of the way. Right, right hand down the right.
So I'd winched up the first section. Now to see if I can tackle the next bit. Should just be able to crawl straight up. Forward, pick up forward. That right. bead's really stuck. That's alright, you still got enough pressure. It might help you through here. We'll pump up with stuff. Yeah, alright, straight at that. Now, straighten up your wheels a bit. Yep. Alright, go straight. Yep. A little bit of left. Keep going. Yep, that's good. A little bit of right, a little bit of right. Yep, good. Alright, now, this is where you're going to have to like crawl over the rocks. That's alright, I reckon we'll turn left a little bit later. So if you go back up a bit, back up a bit. Keep back up a bit. I don't know if I might hit that rock. Alright, stop there. Now go a bit of right hand down as you come forward. Yeah, now go forward. Yeah, keep going. Keep going, yeah. Now, alright, go back. You might have to, you'll have to hop over that rock. So if you go right hand down and just sort of hop it, you'll be able to roll back. Bull bus straight, straight here, right? <laughs> alright, now, if you go back slowly, yeah, alright, now, keep going back, keep going back. Now turn hard left into it. See and if you, you can, can drive, drive that around. around. Yeah, push bull bar. Oh, you're right, you're right. <laughs> hey! Hey, good job. Oh, my car is like kissing air. It actually doesn't look too bad. How's my bull bar? Shit, I didn't even realize no, how close I was. I just kind of like jabbed into it. Oh, good work. Did it? Yeah. It drove that a little bit. That was that the front lock is so we both made it through flat rock track unscathed, but I did have that rapidly deflating front right tire. Alright, so you just got through that. As you'll see here, Patrick has suffered a flat tire. Pretty much what's happened is um, dirt. Obviously one of the tracks where he was riding the wall or something like that, dirt has got shoved between uh, the rim and the bead of the tyre um, and it's caused a leak as he's, as he's going along. And that is literally like the exact reason, like textbook, as to why I got bead locked. Not necessarily because I wanted to be able to go crazy low pressures, even though that's a, obviously a bonus, but because I was sick of getting stuff wedged between uh, the rim and the bead and then it causes you to get a flat and you've got to deflate the tyre and, and like half trip, like strip it off the bead so you can dig out the dirt, it's a pain. So with bead locks, not an issue anymore. So Paddy's gonna have fun fixing this before we can go home. So here's how to quickly clean out the bead on your deflating tire in the bush. First, work out where on the bead it's actually leaking. Now it's coming out. Oh yeah, you can see it. Yeah. Then remove the core from the tire, cut up a bit of wood to use as a ramp, and drive the car back up it to deseat the bead. Keep going. All right, yeah, that's good, that's good. With the bead now visible, you should be able to easily clean the dirt out of it. Then drive back off it, reinsert the core, and inflate the tyre, and with any luck, you'll have no more leaks. It lives to see another day. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to wrap up our little overnight trip in Talarook. It was actually an awesome trip. Great awesome. camping, um, some great four-wheel driving. Obviously, like, I couldn't be more stoked with how the patrol drove. I think it was a bit of a combination of all the different mods that we put on it, but yeah, it just it really surprised me and made me super confident now, which is awesome. And I suppose... Uh, yeah, no, the A did a, it pretty well considering, like... Um, yeah, well, it yeah. kept up. You had to winch one section, which, for the, how heavy it is in 30 yeah. degrees... Yeah, I it's set up for touring, not as much yeah, as hard it. stuff, but yeah, so super, super fun. So, if you guys enjoyed the trip, give it a like, um, get subscribed, because we've got a heap more of this style of videos coming. So, we'll see you next time in Next Aussie Armour video. Cheers, guys.